Science is not in the business of shedding light on moral debates, but I think it can do sometimes. Um, the whole subject of moral philosophy, of um, examining moral questions in a logical way to expose inconsistencies, for example, um, when you're looking at moral questions, so-called moral questions like abortion or euthanasia, you can show that people who take a very strong absolutist line may be being inconsistent with themselves because they are um, taking a strong line on one thing while at the same time inconsistently not taking a similarly strong line on another. So that will be a, a scientific way of thinking. It's not science per se, it's moral philosophy, but it's a kind of scientific way of thinking. But also I think scientific facts can illuminate moral debate in the case of abortion again, for example. Uh, a, science, a scientist might contribute to the debate information about at what point during the development of, a, of an embryo um, the nervous system comes into being. And uh, presumably before the nervous system comes into existence uh, there is no ability to feel pain or to suffer. And so maybe something important happens at the moment when the nervous system comes into being. On the other hand, you might say, well, even when a human embryo develops a nervous system and develops the capacity to, to perhaps suffer, it's still a much smaller nervous system than the nervous system of an adult cow. And so what about balancing the suffering uh, of a human embryo against the suffering of an adult cow when it's being slaughtered for meat? Um, an absolutist moralist would say, well, humans are just plain special. And cows are not human, so they don't deserve the same moral consideration. Um, but a scientist might come along and say, well, what do you mean by that? I mean, we are, after all, all evolved. We're all cousins. At what point would you, at what point in the evolution of, since we know evolution is a fact, at what point in the evolution of humans would you suddenly draw the line and say, right, from now on they're all human, and before that they're not? Um, in the evolutionary uh, progression from the common ancestor with chimpanzees, lived about six or seven million years ago, to modern humans going through creatures which might have looked a bit like Lucy, might have looked a bit like the newly discovered fossil Ardi. Um, would you have given special human, moral, ethical consideration to Lucy, or would you count Lucy as though she was a chimpanzee? Um, does this perhaps suggest to you that we shouldn't be in the business of drawing lines between species in this kind of way. Maybe the, these lines should be regarded as more fuzzy and less clear-cut. Our absolutist moralities that do draw hard and fast lines between humans and all other species, even taking a human fetus and calling that human, and whereas an adult chimpanzee is not and doesn't deserve the same moral consideration, is that uh, consistent with, with science? These, these are ways in which science can at least inform moral discussions. You can, I suppose, make a utilitarian justification for obnoxious practices. You could make a utilitarian justification for torture. Um, moral philosophers sometimes pose the hypothetical case where the world is about to be blown up. Only one person knows the secret password to stop the doomsday bomb going off. <coughs> Only one person knows the secret password to stop the doomsday bomb going off. This one person is a suicide bomber who refuses to give up the password. Are you right to torture him? And most people, I think, say you are. I mean, you're, it's, a, it's a horrible thing to torture somebody, but under those extreme conditions, to save the world, you would, you would torture somebody. So and that would be a utilitarian justification for a, an otherwise obnoxious practice such as torture. Mm -hmm.